my name is Tamika Corey, and I'm from EJ Music and Video Productions. And we have a special guest here today who we'd like to honor and just bring her into the studio and find out more about her CD. Let's drop it. Her name is Andrew Brown, and we're just so excited to have her here. So will you help us welcome Andrew Brown? Andrew! <laughs> Thank you, Tamika, for that introduction. Again, this is Andrew Brown. I just want to give you just a small um, part of me. Um, I was born and raised right here in the local area, Fountain, North Carolina, maybe about 17, 20 miles from here. Um, born and raised in this area. Um, I am so honored to be here today, and I just want to say thank you. I want to tell everyone I'm excited about this project. I want you to listen, listen up for the radios, online. You know, I'll, I'll give information on my website. Um, so just kind of sit back and let's get ready. All right, well, we like the sound of that. So tell us a little bit about what your first experience with music was like. Well, my first experience with music was, um, I guess when I was a little girl, um, I remember sitting in the classroom in elementary school. I remember being excited about uh, our music teacher coming. I remember uh, the teacher preparing things in the classroom. And when the music teacher arrived, we were so excited. I was so excited, I couldn't wait to get up and go find a favorite instrument that I love playing, um, that was a tambourine. Because with the tambourine, I could always beat and make some type of sound and pretend that I was singing. Um, it was just something about music as a little girl that just um, gave me the opportunity to express myself. And it just made me happy, you know, so. I just, I really enjoyed music as a child. Awesome, well what was the first song, or the first songs you remember singing as a child? What were some of those favorite songs? Well, I do recall remember me of singing this song called um, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. What child does not remember singing that song? I remember singing um, for the first time at my, my church when I was a little girl. Um, Dillon's Chapel Free Will Baptist Church right there in Fountain. And I remember uh, my dad saying to me, um, he said, he said, come here. And he's, I stood in front of him and he said, he said, I want you to sing a song in church Saturday afternoon for our anniversary. And I said, well, I don't know what to sing. And he said, well, sing anything. He said, but when you sing, he said, you don't look at the faces of the crowd. He said, look straight up or you look right at the door. He said, because if you look at the faces, you may get a little afraid. So what I did, I said, okay. I made my mind up that I was going to sing this song because of course, daddy said I had to sing it. So Saturday night comes, I get up in front of the whole church and I was about eight years old at the time. And I sung this song called, I Made a Vow to the Lord. And as I opened my mouth and began to sing, I remember thinking to myself, is this me singing? And when I got done, the whole entire church was up on their feet. People began to shout, began to praise the Lord. And on my way to the seat, I remember thinking to myself, wow, did I do that? But I had no idea that it was not me at all. It was God. It was the anointing of the Holy Spirit um, that moved upon me that night. And that was the night that I realized that I could sing. Awesome, awesome. All right, and so, is that also a part of what made you want to make singing a part of your life now, or are, are there other reasons as well? Well, it wasn't so much now of, of making the decision to sing, because like I said, I really didn't realize um, the gift that I had. I didn't really realize um, to what extent the gift was, because I didn't understand the anointing. I didn't really understand music at all. All I knew is I love music. I, all I knew is, okay, you know, no, I can sing, but I didn't realize that God would want me to do something with it. I didn't realize that the gift that God had given me, and as long as, as well with other people that have gifts, you know, I realized now God gives us gifts to use for his kingdom. After a long day of cleaning up the yard and cleaning the house, you know, um, I remember on Saturday afternoons, like right at just dawn, I remember me and my sisters singing and getting a, you know, getting the opportunity to just we clap our hands and we pretend that we was a choir. Even though it was three of us, we would pretend that we were having church. And my sister Gail would lead the song and 
we would just practice together and sing and sing. And I remember my mom sitting in the back room listening and she would holler out to us, keep on going. You know, and that was just one of them. I also remember my dad. I remember my dad, he was the president of our choir and my dad could not sing. But I remember my dad used to make these funny sounds and the people in the choir would, would laugh at him. But my dad was an awesome, awesome director and he, he, we had it together. And I remember some of the things that he would say to us to encourage us, you know, uh, no matter how other people come in, no matter how awesome the other choirs are, you sing and you sing your heart out. And those things like that just really encouraged me. Just having the memory of my dad standing there with us and him pretending that he could sing and couldn't sing. But by the time we got done with everything, we had those songs together and we were a powerhouse. Awesome, awesome. So what were some of the things that you struggled with as a child? Do you remember? Well, I think one of the things I struggled with was, um, I guess, being, maybe just being a little different. <laughs> um, I've always felt like uh, I had this feeling of not being able to, I guess, be in. And I also remember there was one more particular thing um, that when I was a child that happened. Um, I remember this wooden house that we used to live in. It was an old house, kind of big house kind of, because to me it seemed like it was, it was really big because I was so small. Um, I think I was about four years old. Me and my little brother, you know, we would um, go outside on the back porch and there were some little cement steps as we go outside the screen door. And me and my little brother would sit there on those cement steps and we would talk about Jesus. And we would pretend that we were in church. I would pretend that I was a singer and my brother would pretend that he's the preacher. So he would start preaching like he was preaching. I mean, just walking around like he's, you know, talking to the Lord. And I would start singing, you know, and I would just start get up and I just begin to raise my hand and just worship God. And we would do this every day. And one particular day we did this. My brother wasn't there. I remember of going back on those, on those steps and sitting down. And I remember of singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, because the Bible told me so. And as I began to sing that song, there was a sensation that came over me and I began to cry and I couldn't stop crying. And I just kept singing and I just could not stop crying for anything. So then I remember of lifting my hands and just praising God. And I didn't know that it was the Holy Spirit that had taken over because I had a sister um, named Annette and Annette would tell me all the time, she would say, you keep on playing with the Lord. He's going to get you sooner or later. And that was the day when he got me. <laughs> you know, that was the day that I felt for the first time in my life, I experienced what the Holy Spirit felt like. So, Andrew, how many songs are on this project? Um, this project that I've just completed um, is seven songs, but actually uh, one of the songs is instrumental. And my favorite one on this, um, this project is called You're the Only One. Um, that's the one that I've done a video on. Um, this will be up on YouTube. And the reason why this is my favorite song is because this song describes things that, um, I guess, things that I've gone through like within the last year, um, including uh, something that I experienced in high school, you know. And, um, and high school was, you know, high school was, was kind of difficult. Um, and there's one scene in there that describes uh, me talking to my friends about a situation that I was in, you know, at that time. And as I went to them to talk to them, you know, because, you know, I was a teenage mom and I wanted to tell my friends about this. And um, when I went to talk to them about it, you know, they stopped talking to me. You know, that's why you see the part in the video that while I was just standing there, they all just walked away from me. And they did exactly that. They stopped talking to me and they just walked away. And you know how girls are in high school. Every day you meet at a certain place, you know, during lunch break. And that particular day I told them, 
And when, we, when I returned the next day, they weren't there. Angel, you shared a lot with us. You shared with us about childhood. You shared with us about influences and things that um, are really important to you, some things you want to do. Let's talk about your aspiration and future goals, whether it be through your music, spiritually. Where do you see the Lord leading you? What, where's your heart at? Mm. Wow. Um, first and foremost, you know, the Word of God tells us that faith without works is dead. You know, so um, I'm... I believe that this is something that God has given me. It's a dream he has given me, a vision that he has given me, a goal that he has given me. Um, of course, right belong, right beside um, the love of my life, my husband. Um, he's right there with me, and um, he is, of course, my leader. And um, we believe that this is something that God has given us, you know, um, to go forward in just spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, through song, whether it's through song, whether it's through him ministering, because usually we go out, you know, he'll minister, and I'll, I'll minister in song. So I'm just, you know, believing, and I, I just believe in my heart with everything in me that this is something that God has given me to share with the world, you know. To, we know that the, the, the anointing breaks the yoke, you know. So it's not me. I give God all the glory for everything. You know, the things he's done in my life, the things he's going to do in my life in the future. You know, wherever God leads me is where I'm going to go. Well, we're going to wrap up a little bit here. But before we do, I want you to tell the audience about who this awesome producer is by the name of Jimmy Brown, <laughs> the manager that has helped you through this project. Let's hear about Mr. Jimmy. <sighs> Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. I don't know where to begin at. When, I, when God first gave this to us, um, in order for you know to me for me to write music, I'm thinking I don't know how to write music. I have no idea on, on what to do or what direction to go in. So, you know, the Word of God tells us that if you want to know something, if you want wisdom, ask, and He'll give it to us. And so that's what I did. Lord, I don't know what I'm doing, so I need you to help me. And from being connected from one person to the next person to the next person, that's how I met Jimmy. Um, and he has been a true blessing to us. We, I, I just don't believe that, um, that it just would have been possible, you know, had God not sent Jimmy in our lives, you know. Jimmy to us is like a part of our family, you know. Um, he, he is awesome, absolutely phenomenal when it comes to creating music. Um, he has given us so many great, um, great ideas on what to do. Um, the music that he produces, you know, has just, I mean, I remember the first time, uh, the first song that I recorded, and um, he had, um, we, you know, we got together, we recorded the music, we recorded the words with it, and I remember he sent us the soundtrack and the music, and with the lyrics in it, um, through um, my email. And I remember opening up that email and hearing that song, and it just blew my mind. It absolutely blew my mind on how phenomenal and how gifted this, you know, this person was. And I knew then that this was something that God had put together. So, Jimmy, thank you, thank you, thank you. As I go in different places, um, I hear Jimmy's name here. Jimmy, you know, oh, yeah, Jimmy Brown is the person I work with. Jimmy Brown is the person I work with. Jimmy's name is everywhere. He is absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. I would never choose another producer. And also, that the person that helped me with um, the beats and the sounds to my music <laughs> is my husband. He would always, um, I would say, honey, um, I need, because I could hear the words in my, in my head, and I could somewhat hear the music in my head, too. But I needed a rhythm, and I, I learned that from Jimmy. You know, he would say, uh, he told us, he said, well, get your husband to make a beat or something, and then send it to me. And so I would get, my, get with my husband and say, okay, honey, I need a beat to the song. And we would sit down together and he'd get on the countertop in the kitchen and he'd start beating and God created a song. And every last one of my seven songs started with a beat from my husband, just beating on things, you know, beating on the countertop, beating on the, ta the kitchen table and just gave me a beat to my songs. And that's how all of them started. You know, God gifted his hands. Even when he was a little boy, he used to walk around beating on things. But he didn't realize that God was going to take that little small talent 
and help me create my, my, my music. You know, so I just, I, I get tickled when I think about that because I can see him walking around as a little boy. And, but he had no idea of what God was going to do with that little rhythm that he had in his hands then. He didn't know that God was going to use him to help me create the music that we would give to Jimmy. And Jimmy would actually pull together all this together through the anointing of God and create the songs that God has given me. So again, honey, thank you, Elva Brown. And Jimmy Brown, thank you. Also, I want to thank one more very, very important person. And that is my manager, Mr. Leroy Berry. He has been such a great inspiration to me. He has been beside me from the very beginning. Um, he, he has just encouraged me. He's been my spiritual counselor. Um, he's been uh, like a father to me. And I just want to tell him thank you. There were times that I just didn't know what to do, what direction to go in. And I picked up the phone or sent him a text and he was right there. Uh, I just, I want to say thank you, Mr. Berry, because um, my husband and I, we just, we wouldn't have been able to have done this had God not placed you in our life. And you have been such a blessing. I cannot say it in, in words. I don't know how to describe how, um, how the, the difference that you made in our life through these, these years, through these times of putting this project together. You know, you giving me um, information, you um, giving me the word when I needed it. When I felt like quitting and stopping, you were right there to say, no, you come too close to this. You're working, you put too much in it. You know, God is in this. There's a message for the world that God wants to send out through, to the world through you. And I just want to say thank you, Mr. Barry. Thank God for you. And I'm looking forward to so many more years of working, of us working together. Thanks. Thank you, Andro. And if anybody would like to book Andro for a show and want her to come out and sing for you, you can contact Leroy Berry at brpmusic at yahoo.com. And if anybody's looking for some recording help or producing, you can contact Mr. Jimmy at jimmyismobile at yahoo.com. And his number is 919-395-3132. And also don't forget to hit Andro up on YouTube. Her video will be posting soon. And Andro, you're the only one for me. So before we leave, Andro, we would just like for you to take this opportunity to please speak into the camera and talk to the people like yourself that's pursuing their walk with Christ and just tell them anything you want their hearts to know right now. Well, I will say this. Um, I just want the audience to know that no matter how hard it is, don't quit. Um, this has been a long time, you know, it's a long time coming. We've worked for so long on this. And so many times I felt like quitting. Sometimes, you know, the enemy would try to confuse me to say, you know, you, you don't know what you're doing. This is not what God told you to do. And, but I learned through the years and going through experiences, I've learned that when the enemy comes to you and try to discourage you from doing something, that is a true sign that you are a major threat to his kingdom. That is a true sign that you are doing exactly what God wants you to do. Because just like the sower that sowed the seeds, as he plants the seeds, the enemy comes. He likes to come straight in and steal the seed from you. So I would say to every person that believes that God has given them a vision, a goal, you know, a future hope of using the gifts that God can give you, no matter what the gift is, you know, use it for the kingdom of Christ. Use it for spreading the gospel. Because God can take our mess and turn it into a message. You know, so take the opportunity, you know, and just say, God, I'm discouraged. I feel like quitting. I don't know what to do. Be honest with the Lord and tell God you want to quit. And just, sometimes I, I, I feel like I messed up so much or so horribly that, you know, God's not going to want to use me because I messed up so bad. But then the Holy Spirit will come right back and say that, you know what? The Word of God says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. And I would hear the Holy Spirit say, Carol, don't quit. Don't stop. You messed up. You've fallen. You did this. You did that. But God doesn't care about those things. What God is concerned about is your heart. And I have a heart for God. I still have a heart for God. I want to pursue this. You know, I didn't call myself. I believe that Christ has called me to do this. You know, so I would say to you, anybody that's, that's, that's even thinking about um Something that maybe God, you're not too sure that God gave you this. Try it anyway. Because you will never know if you don't try. 
You'll never know what the results are going to be if you don't start. If you quit, you never find out. So people that are negative, people don't have good things to say about you, people that um, that's not doing anything themselves, hey, that's them. Take your focus off of them and focus on what God has given you to do. No matter how hard it is, no matter what things you've done wrong, repent for those things and keep going. That's what the Word of God tells us to do. It says that a righteous man falls, but he gets back up again. So I encourage you, run. Keep running and don't quit. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you.